Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. Okay, so this wasn't too hard to make, actually. Um, this number combination lock demo, uh, someone asked for it on Twitter, so I made it for them. I thought I'd teach how to do it, because it's, it's really easy. So if you think of this as like a password, um, a um, number lock, or uh, a padlock or something, then I can move left and right through these, and go up and down, and it loops around from 9 to 0 and 0 to 9, like that. And you put in the numbers. And if it's the correct number, then it will unlock. So I think it, I set it to 3, 2, 1, 9. Yay! Uh, ding. Um... But uh, with the logic, you just like set the numbers that you want as the passcode, and that's about it. So I'm going to delete that and start again. Um, so I'm going to start with a block. It doesn't really matter. You don't really need a block. You can just have all this in a chip. So yeah, first we need the controls and stuff for one of the numbers, and then copy that out and, and adjust it how I need to. So... Um, each of the numbers will have one chip, so we, get, we need um, a number displayer, so it just displays a number, and it has a number range setting in here, which you can set, but we want to be able to send a value into here with, from another gadget. And as we want to loop around 0 to 9, it's very easy to do that with a selector. So a selector, for this purpose, just you just want to set how many channels it has. We want 10 channels. And then it will output the active port number here. So if we just wire that into there, play time, you see it's on zero. So the first one is zero. And then if we have like a switch, just put that there, going into next, and another one going into previous, then each one, each time it gets sent a signal into next, it will increase until it gets to the last one. And then when you go next again, it will loop around to the start. Like that. So we're actually sent the numbers we need from 0 to 9, and then um, and it loops around just right. And if we go back, and then we go back again, it will go loop around to the end and get us back to 9. So that's exactly the same, exactly the kind of um, stuff we want to happen for this uh, control. Cool. So this this one uh, moves up. So that's up, and this switch moves down. Now, if we actually use a controller sensor so that the player can actually do this during the game, we'll put it onto remote controllable mode which means you don't have to possess this object or anything. You can stay possessing a character or a first-person rig or something like that. Um, and this will just work while this is powered. So if we go to the third tab, there's up on D-pad and down on the D-pad. So up should go to up and down should go to down. Um, but we'll actually have lots of these chips copied out. So uh, I don't want to have to hook all that stuff up every time. So instead, I'll just use a keyframe to turn on up and a keyframe to turn on down. So keyframes are just gadgets that store some state of a, of a, of a setting or something. So this is remembering that switch being on, and that one is remembering that switch being on. And when this keyframe gets powered, when I press up, so when I press up, that gets powered because of the signal coming from here, and then that restores the state that it remembered. So it turns that switch on. And have the same for down, so now we've got up and we've got down. And if we play time, you've got the number over there, and as we press up and down, we are we are going up on the numbers and down on the numbers, and it all works fine. But we also want to be able to check if this is correct, if this is the correct number. So 
Um, to be able to set the the required number, I'm going to have that outside of the chip, and I'll have a value slider, and we need it to go from 0 to 9. So I'm using L1 and square to edit this, and then I can just type in a number. And now I can just set the number like that, but I want to set it to actual integers, because this is only going to have integers. We want to see if that number is the same as this active port number. So I will use a calculator, wire that in there, and then wire this value slider in there, and you put it into equal mode. So now if the active port is equal to the required, the required number, then it will send a signal out of the result. So if you play time and change, change this using the controls to down to three, now it's sending a signal. And if it's not three, it's not sending a signal. And that's exactly what we want. So uh, I'll just put that through an output node. So I'll add a node here and wire that in. And if we close that now, we can still see that output node. And you can give it a name. So this is just that signal, but it's just available even when the uh, chip is closed. So I'm going to name this correct. I'll give it a flag icon, and now when you hover over this, it says correct, and it gives you a flag icon. Uh, for this example, anyway, I want it to be um, displayed in the scene. So I'll turn on the grid, turn it down a bit with L1, L1 down and up on the D-pad, adjust the gaps between them. So um, to make this in the scene, you, you uh, tweak the displayer and go to the settings tab, and then turn on in scene and now it's in the scene and you can look around it and stuff so i want to put it there i'm going to turn off the background and stuff and make this white so it's easier to see on this blue background and then so each number will be moved across a little bit so that you got four numbers across there one last thing though is i want to be able to allow these or disallow these so that i can move left and right and only edit the one edit the number that I'm highlighting for example so I'll have another switch in here and this is just powering these so the keyframes will still do stuff like that it still turns it on but it won't send any signal through so if you play time this switch is off and if I press up and down those are those keyframes are trying to turn those switches on, but it's not changing this in any way because the switches, switch gadgets themselves are off. And then when you turn them on, then they'll work again. So we want to leave it off until we have uh, some logic out here telling it that it's allowed to be on. So I'm just going to, um, I think I might make, make this an input node actually. So I'll have another node on this side so when you make a node if you make one on the left side of the gadget uh, anywhere from like here onwards you know uh, then it becomes an input and it's a different icon than, than when you put it on the right and then it's an output and you can see it's representing it as an output by this kind of um, fake wire going up to the edge and same here with the fake wire going to the input edge Alternatively, you can have you can tweak it and set it to no port, which doesn't have an input or an output, or input or output, and you can just set that manually. Uh, right now, we just want this uh, input thing, so I'll just wire this in into the switch directly, and then we can wire stuff into this to tell it to be on or off. So I'll give it another icon. Allow edit. Cool, and because that's an input node, we have that port coming in on there. Allow edit. So move that over there, and we'll make four of these. So I'll copy that and then use right on the D-pad to multi-clone like that. And then we need to kind of adjust where these are. So I'll just play and pause, and that means all of the all of the numbers are being displayed now. So then I can just go into these and adjust them a little bit. Like that. We've got controls to go up and down and change these numbers, but we haven't got controls for going left and right and controlling a different number. 
So we'll do that now. Uh, for that, we're going to use another selector. And this one will use a different feature of it. So another thing this can do is, so this these send out, uh, depending on which one is active and uh, lit up like that, that sends a signal out of here. So if you wire that into there, then if we're on A, it will go through the switch and allow it to change with these uh, switches here. And then B will go into here. C will go into here. D will go into here. And now only one of these, the, the currently active one, will actually do anything. And then we go into D-pad again, and we want left and right to do stuff. So uh, the, this, this top one is the leftmost one, and then it moves right as we go on. So as we move right, if we press right, we want to go to the next on the selector, and left will go into the previous one on the selector. So if I play time now, and so that I can test this, normally if you press left and right, it's going to undo and redo stuff. But if you hold L1 and use left and right on the D-pad, it doesn't do that. So now I can like test that these controls are working properly, uh, just like that. And I'm actually going to um, add a thing so that this will turn on the the border so that you can tell which one you're actually selected at the current moment. So I'll just uh, edit that. Okay, so now let's just test over here. Oh, we started around the place, sometimes you do. Um, so now I can use the right and left to change which one I'm selecting, and then use up and down to change the number. Um, cool, and if we like, just change one of them to three, and then pause, you can see that uh, that one is sending out a signal which is good. Uh, so we want to know if all four of these match the input numbers over here. So let's use an AND gate. So an AND gate just says, uh, this has multiple inputs as well, and you can set them here, or you can just kind of keep wiring in and it'll add one as you need it. So this says if this signal, whatever this is coming from, it says if this signal is is uh, true or on and this one is on and this one is on and this one is on then and only then will it send out a signal from the output over here so let's make that do something i'm going to make the key make a keyframe that set this sets this to glow like that and then power that if they're all correct so uh yeah if i just tweak that so if I just play time and change these, so that becomes a three. So now that's lit up, but it's not sending a signal out of the, the result. And still not, and still not. And then it does because they're all correct. And if we change that, now it doesn't send a signal. So let's just uh, test that again in here. Change them all to three. And it glows, yay! And that's about it. So you can change like the controls, you can change how it looks, um, you can change what it does when it unlocks, so you can have it actually unlock a door or whatever. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Go to patreon.com slash tapgiles to learn something new every day.